So, all right, cool. We are recording. I'm so grateful that you are here. We have an awesome guest speaker tonight, and we actually just connected through the round table. So if you don't know what the round table is, it's basically a group that Beach Buddy puts together. It's on Facebook and it's for all of the five star diamond coaches and above. So it's a really great community to connect with other people in the business and swap team calls and just kind of see what other teams are doing and share what's working for you. Uh, it's a really great networking group to be a part of. So if you're not there yet, you'll be there someday, but that's how we connected. And it's just really neat to be able to, to do that and intermingle with different teams and hear different perspectives and, you know, hear from different people, what's working for them and what's, you know, what's not working and kind of course correct from there. So our guest speaker today, her name is Dylan, which I love your name. I love all of them to be like boys or girls. I think it's, they're the coolest names. So <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I, I want to make sure that I get this right. So you, you, how long have you been a coach for? Did you say? Did you um, say? just hit three and a half years. Okay, yeah, that's right. So fairly new in this business. Three years is pretty new, um, as a coach in this business because, like, you know, some you go to school for some people go to school for four or five years. So three years is really not a very long time to be in a business. But the amount of success that she has had in that time is really amazing. So. Some of her accolades, she's a lifetime five-star diamond coach. She's a two-star diamond in her second CBC. She's a 2020 elite coach and 2019 premier. So out of her three years, she's been either elite or premier two of those years. She is also a retired teacher like myself. Um, two years into the business, she retired from teaching. She's also a best-selling author, which is super cool. And she's a mom of two. They're 11 months apart, so I'm sure she's got her hands full with that. <laughs> and she is also a wife to a PE coach. So I'm going to just hand it over to you and let you run with this. I'm really grateful that you're here, and thank you for sharing your, your time and just being here with us tonight. Um, and yeah, thanks. So you can just floor is all yours. <laughs> okay, so I am going to share my screen because former teacher life, I have to like keep myself on track. Um, so can you guys see this? Yeah, okay. <clears throat> all right. So basically what I was going to talk to you guys about tonight is just basically how to stay consistent, cast your vision, find your non-negotiables, and basically just accomplish your goals through the rest of this year. I think February is the perfect time to talk about all of this because <clears throat> what I was just telling my girls the other night is I feel like January is almost like our like practice run for the year. I think January is very much like a warm up for going into whatever's ahead of us. So February, I feel like, is really that launch pad for your 2020 or whatever year ahead. <clears throat> and I have down here, even when life is crazy, because I'm going to kind of explain that a little bit. Um, so as she shared, I am a mom of two. Um, I've been doing this three years. Former teacher, I taught for six years and then just retired. So this is actually, I haven't even been home a full school year or year yet, which is like crazy because I feel like it's been forever. Um, my husband's a PE teacher. I am coaching full time now. She already said all these premier coach 2019, 2020 elite, five star my main, two star my second. My team ended number 86 in the network this past year. Um, and all of those things are so awesome. And like, I'll shout them from the rooftops forever because I am proud of those and I will brush my shoulders off. But at the same time, I think just as important is to share all of the not so shiny things that have also gone on in the time, in the three years that I've been coaching. So um, when I started coaching, my husband and I were actually um, trying to get pregnant. We were seeing different fertility specialists, going through different treatments. Um, we ended up pregnant with my daughter when I had been coaching for like 10 months. Um, and that was during rounds of fertility treatments. Um, I had a high risk pregnancy with her and was put on bed rest in the hospital for the past for like the last um, 21 days of my pregnancy and then had to do a C-section with her at 36 weeks. And then I got pregnant with my son and found out I was pregnant with him at 14 weeks postpartum. And that was like, I literally started, I joke all the time, I started 80 Day Obsession. That's when 80 Day Obsession came out for the public and I started it at seven weeks postpartum, even though my doctor was like, you really probably shouldn't be doing this, but I did it anyways and I just modified 
as heavily as I could. Um, so that was seven weeks postpartum and I finished it and I was pregnant with my son. So it was like a full, full circle. Um, but he was also a high risk pregnancy. I went into preterm labor with him and was put on bed rest again. Um, I was put on bed rest at like 33 and a half weeks. And then I had him a C-section at 39 weeks. So that was two C-sections in less than a year. Um, I was also teaching full time during that entire period. Um, I obviously was a teacher and my husband's a PE coach. So it wasn't like we had extra funds. We were constantly like struggling with money. And that was one of the things going into this business that was terrifying to me, yet also motivating was like, oh my gosh, we're trying to start a family and we're like getting deeper and deeper into credit card debt. And my husband's so much like the realist slash pessimist. And I'm like the optimist, like, it's fine. Everything will work out. It'll be okay. Like whatever. Um, and I had really high hopes for this business, which I've ended up being right. But he was like terrified for me starting this. Cause he's like, we don't have the money. We're going to get deeper into credit card debt. <clears throat> I actually signed up for this on a credit card to start my business. Um, so that was all going on while I was starting. My mom was diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, she went through chemo and radiation. She is cancer free now, <clears throat> but all of this, you guys, is things that went on while I was coaching. Um, the year that I went premier was when my mom was going through chemo and radiation while I was, had had, was pregnant with my son. You can see my gigantic belly. My daughter was not even one yet. Like there are so many different things that could have stopped me. And that's the reason that I share these. <clears throat> I've had multiple people join in with me and have something happen. And it's a very real thing. It's a very real obstacle. It's a very real inconvenience. And they use that as their excuse to just stop. <clears throat> so the reason I really want to share this with you guys is that, yes, hard things are going to happen. And that's life. But that's not a reason to stop this controllable. That's not a reason to stop this business. If anything, that's a reason to pour even more into this business. You guys, this was my controllable. In those times where life was crazy or unpredictable or honestly out of my control, I, I couldn't really control any of these things right here. But this business was something that I could control and that I could really dive into and pour all of my positive energy into and really fill my cup with. So um, if there's even anything that you take away from this, it's that when those hard things happen, and I don't wish them upon anyone, but when they do happen, when life happens and things get rough, I want you to think back to this moment and just think, yeah, but what can I control in this second right now? Like, what is that controllable thing that I can pour into? And I want that to be this business. I don't want you to stop or take a step back or <clears throat> to take your foot off the gas. I want you to instead push down on the gas, like push that gas pedal down and pour into this business while all those other things are going on. Cause I promise it gets you through those moments. Um, okay. So with that, one of the biggest things that got me through those times was that I had a vision and knew what my goals were going forward. So, um, I, again, teach your life and very hands-on. Um, so what I would love to hear from you guys, um, I'm going to pull up the chat. Oh no, don't look. Close your eyes. <laughs> what I would love to hear from you guys is um, some goals that you have and some visions because I think it's really hard to go forward with this business or to move past those hard times without knowing why you're doing it. If you don't have a vision or you don't have goals, then when those hard times happen, you're gonna be like, well, I'm done. Like, I'm gonna take a break. But if your vision is so big, you're gonna be like, okay, so this sucks that this is happening right now, but. I know that I still want this big vision. And so I'm going to keep working toward it. So, um, some different things. So I want you guys to just like one, number one, number two, number three, number one, where do you see yourself by summit? Number two, where do you see yourself at the end of the year? Number three, where do you see yourself in five years? Superstar team, 200,000 a year, four-time elite, top 25 team, set by Summit, 10 star. That's my goal, too. 10 star by Summit. Um, no, no, end of the year, six star elite, full-time coach, superstar diamond. Heck, yes. Keep them coming. 
There's more than two people. <laughs> One star by summit, three star by end of the year, five years full time beach body coach and elite. Awesome. Keep going, keep going. I'll wait for one more. <laughs> Who's going to be next? Here we go. Two star diamond by summit, five star end of the year, 10 star in five years. Awesome. Okay. Keep typing them because I promise it makes it even more real when you type them in there. Okay. So I want to talk a little bit about your story really quick. So what if I were to tell you, and some people already said this, and obviously some people already have done this, but um, what if I said right now that you should be an elite coach this year and or you should be a 10 star this year. What immediately pops into your head when I say those things? A lot of times the thing that pops up is like some kind of limiting belief or excuse like, okay, but I'm only a diamond. Like I can't be 10 star by the end of the year or yeah, but I just started this X amount of time ago. There's no way I could be elite or 10 star this year. Um, yeah, but I am not at the place in my journey where I want to be yet, so I can't do those things. So there's some kind of story that pops up all the time, whether it's time, whether it's some kind of other inconvenience, whether it's um, where you are right now in your journey, there's some kind of limiting belief that always pops up and some kind of story that we're constantly telling ourselves that almost limits that vision that we cast for the year. So my challenge for you guys is I want you to tell yourself a different story. So instead of those excuses popping up for an even bigger dream, you should be a superstar diamond this year. What excuse pops up for you? What limiting belief pops up for you? So instead, what I challenge you guys to do, and you don't have to type it in here, but what I challenge you to do is I want you to cast an even bigger vision. Because you guys, what happens when you cast an even bigger vision for yourself is that if you even fall short, like, okay, big, big time, you make that vision happen. Awesome. You fall short a little bit. You probably even go past where you thought you were going to go and you expand where your dreams are. Like you're going to expand where you've gone this year. You're going to expand where you're going to go the next year and it makes you work even harder. So what I challenge you guys to do is to level up those goals you have for yourself. So if you said, whatever your goal is by summit, what if you double that? So if you said one star by summit, okay, what if you built your spouse or whoever's account to diamond, help them build that to diamond, and then you also found one other business builder? You have plenty of time to do that. What if you go two star by summit? You could do that easily. You could 100% do that, but it's all in your mindset. So set a bigger vision and get in that mindset where I could do all of these things. There's nothing holding me back except my own mindset and my own limiting beliefs. Okay. Um, another thing I hear constantly is when I ask girls on my team, like, okay, so what's your goal? Like, what do you want to do in the first quarter? What is your vision for this? A lot of times they say, okay, well, I want to go diamond by February 20th. I'm going to try my best to be one star at summit. And guess what? Anybody who comes to me and starts their sentence with, I want to, or I'm going to try to, I immediately know that they're not going to make it there. Because if you say I want to, or I'm going to try, it means that you still have those limiting beliefs in the back of your mind that are going to hold you back from getting there. So the fact that you say I'm going to try means that you are not sure that you're going to get there. That means that you still have excuses and you still have limiting beliefs that are telling you that you're not going to make it to that place. So instead, any time that any of you guys on this team talk about your goals moving forward, I challenge you to say, I will do this. I am going to be a superstar environment coach. I am going to be an elite coach. Because when you, even that tiny little bit of wording, when you switch that around and change it, that changes everything. Like there's some kind of flip that gets flipped, like switch that gets flipped in your mind when you change that tiny bit of wording that really makes that thing happen. Um, so mastering your mindset, daily affirmations. Um, I'm huge on these. I share 
I do these with my daughter every single day and I do them for myself every single day. Um, I actually have my second book that's going to be coming out that's um, kids affirmations, but I am a huge believer in these. I think that writing them down, saying them out loud, as hokey as it sounds, looking yourself in the mirror and saying them or having a post-it note. That's how I started with it was having a post-it note just on our bathroom mirror that said, I am, and I had three different statements. So I am an elite coach. I am like putting those statements out there and reading them every single morning, reading them out loud is even better. And it sounds silly because you're looking yourself in the mirror and you're like, this is crazy. Like, why am I talking to myself out loud? But it really does make a difference. So three statements, it doesn't even have to be purely about this business. One about this business, one about your personal life and one about your mindset. So I am fearless. I am an elite coach. I am a wonderful mom. Those are three statements you could read to yourself every single morning that just put that energy out there the second that you wake up. Um, you can also write them down. I don't know if you guys, I think everybody knows who Rachel Hollis is, but if you guys have ever done the Start Today journal, she has like a whole section where it's like 10 different um, I am type statements or I will statements. Um, also having a vision board. I feel like most people in this each body community do some kind of vision board and vision casting for the year but if you don't have that like I literally have mine right in my office space like in front of me every single morning and I have it set into quarters so quarter one here's my specific goals that I'm going to make happen quarter two here's what I will make happen and just kind of having that vision where you see it every single day is so important um and then this was a lesson that I learned in this business like I know hearing premiere in my second year and elite in my third year and all that is awesome but I can say 100% like when I found out I was premiere in for 2019 like 2018 year um it was like a total shock to me because I honestly at that point in my coaching career was like bare minimums all the time like I would hit success club six and that was my goal for the month like once I hit that, I was like, phew, okay, sit back. Like I'm done for the month. That's it. Phew, I'm done. And when I had my son in November of that year, that's, and I hit two star, I was like checking boxes, but I was still doing bare minimum. Like I wasn't really pushing or treating it like the business that it could be. And I had my son that November. And once I had him, I was like, okay, you know what? Now that I have two kids, I really feel like I could stay home. Like I could do this full time. I don't want to have to go back to work full time. I want to be with them all the time. And I had this, another switch flipped. I was about to flip it again. Flip, switch, flip, switch, flip. I had this switch flipped where I was like, you know what? If I want this to be a full-time business, I have to treat it like a full-time business. And I had to like assess the things that I was doing. And I had to decide, okay, so is what I'm doing right now, the bare minimums, is that going to get me to the point where I can work this business full time? So even assessing that in your business, like, are you actually treating it like what you want it to be? And then mastering your story. So sharing constantly who you were, who you are now and who you want to be and thinking, okay, so if my vision for the year is to be a superstar diamond coach, then I need to show up every day. Like, the superstar diamond coach that I am. So how would a superstar diamond coach show up every single day? If I want to be an elite coach, how would an elite coach show up every day? Would they sleep in every morning? Would they wake up early and get their stuff done before their kids wake up? Like, how are you going to show up during the day and show up that way every single day? Because your vision matters. So honor that vision and honor those goals. And then just get really intentional with your time. Um, I get up every single morning at 4.30. <clears throat> I, when I was teaching full time, I was getting up around like four, sometimes like three 30 ish, just depending on what my day looked like, because I knew that I wanted big things for this. I had my alarm set and every single morning it says like, do you want to stay home or not? You're doing this for your kids. You're doing this for your future. Like I had all of my alarms labeled and it was like five minute increments, which is super annoying. And my husband hates it. Cause it was like every five minutes he's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> which was also motivating because I'm like, oh, that's going to be so annoying when my next alarm goes off and it's playing a Christmas song to wake me up. But 
it is motivating to have that labeled right there for why are you doing this? Why are you getting up? And I tell my girls all the time, I want you to compare it. And this is what helps my brain. Okay, do you want to sleep an extra 30 minutes or do you want to stay home with your kids full time? Do you want to watch that one episode of that show right now while it's live or do you want to pay off all your debt? So really compare those things. And you guys, it doesn't mean that you can't sleep in sometimes. It doesn't mean that you're not allowed to watch TV. Like I watch TV. We are big TV people at night, but I watch it because I wake up early and I get all my stuff done during the day. And so at night I can unplug, I can be present. I can do all the things because I've been intentional with my time. Um, every single morning I have this list that's just printed and it's also on my vision board, but I have my daily five non-negotiables and I can share this. I have it like in a little PDF if anybody wants it, but basically it's laid out so that every morning when I'm half asleep, like one eye is open, I'm like sipping my coffee and trying to get work done. I know the five things that I'm going to get done. I'm going to get done X amount of invites. I'm going to check in my challenge group. I'm going to check in with my coaches. I'm going to do my personal development and I'm going to do my devotional. Those are five things every single day that I'm going to do before my kids wake up. So that's my stuff that I have right there that is always going to get done in the mornings. And if you need to set timers, set timers for yourself. Um, if you have to be somewhere at a certain time, then map it out. Reverse engineer it. How much time is it going to take for you to do each of these things and figure out how long it's going to take you in the morning. And you guys, if, one thing that really changed in my business was that I was in the mindset that when I was teaching full time, I had to get my workout done before I went to work. But guess what was happening? The days where my alarm went off at 4.30, but I like kind of slept a little bit more and then 4.45 it went off and I kind of slept a little bit more and 5 a.m. came around and I was like, oh, God, okay, you're going to stay home. You're going to stay home with your kids. Get up. You got to do this. Okay. So I would wake up and I would only end up with 30 minutes for me to do all five of these things. So I was really like shirking out on what I needed to do, but I still wanted to get my workout done. So instead I decided, Hey, I'm never going to skip my workout. I will always get my workout done. But if I skip my invites first thing in the morning, then when I get home from work, odds are I'm probably not going to get my invites done when I get home because I'm going to be tired. Excuses are going to pop up. And that's one of those things that like can get pushed to the back burner. But I know that if I get home and I hadn't done my workout yet, I was still going to get my workout done. So even if you need to push your workout to the afternoon, like find what your non-negotiables are and really figure out a schedule that works for you. And then just control the controllable and let go of the rest. So if I can control waking up in the morning, if I can control getting my work done, I'm going to do those things. Um, and then one of my last things is just creating a survival list for yourself. So Yes, getting up at 4.30 every morning is awesome. Yes, getting up at 4 or 3.30 or whatever your time is is awesome, but life is going to happen. There's going to be days where, yes, you did sleep past your alarm. Yes, you feel like crap today. Yes, your kids have been throwing up all night. Like those things are going to happen, but I want you to make this like brushing your teeth. If your kids are sick, you're still going to brush your teeth. If you woke up late, you're still going to brush your teeth. If you slept past your alarm and you're running late for work, you're still going to brush your teeth. You're not going to skip that. And this business and those like very vital behaviors should be the same way. I'm still going to get my workout in. I'm still going to share on my stories. Even if I don't make a post on Instagram, I'm still going to share on my stories. I am still going to send out some number of invites. So maybe it's not the normal number that I would send each day, but I'm going to still send out my survival list number of invites, whether that's three or two, or it's just following up in my messages. Like that's my survival list. So I challenge you guys to also have a survival list for yourself for those days when life does not go the way that you plan, because obviously that'll happen too. Um, so what I have my girls do a lot of times when they're starting to push for diamond or for a bigger goal, star diamond or whatever is come up and they send me their daily to do list, but they also send me their survival list. So on those days when life again, pops up and doesn't go the way you plan, that you still have a plan in place for what you're going to get accomplished. All right. And so my goal for you guys is just to walk away from this call with a renewed sense of purpose and drive and to actually go forward and do those things that you said you're going to do. Whether that means you are 
doubling your goals that you already said, you're tripling your goals, you're pushing them to be a little bit sooner, whatever that means for you, but that you just have that vision in place. Um, okay, so my very last thing for everybody, and this will take you typing in the chat, sorry. Um, so let me pull my chat box up. So, okay, what I wanna hear from you guys is reflecting on this past week, <clears throat> would you pay yourself six figures for the work that you did this past week? So reflecting on what you've done from, what's today, Tuesday? From this Tuesday to last Tuesday, if you were outside, like whatever you would say, like you're your boss, you're coming in, looking at the work that you did, would you pay yourself six figures? So type in the chat, yes or no. And be honest, I do this reflection with myself all the time. Like, did I really do all the things to get myself to the point where I wanna be? Nope, nope, nope. So as you're typing no, <laughs> because that's usually the answer, um, as you're typing no, think about what you could do better. What could have gone better this week? What can't, not looking down on yourself, not criticizing yourself, because this past week already happened, you can't change it. Instead, looking upon it with grace and seeing, okay, what can I do better in this week ahead? Like, okay, so I didn't do this, this, and this in the way that I, wanted to or should have to get me to my goals but what can i do from this tuesday until next tuesday to get myself there all right so what if i told you so pick one of your goals whether it's your summit goal your end of the year goal whatever that big goal that really like gives you butterflies in your belly what if i told you hey so you actually don't have till the end of the year you don't actually have five years from now you don't have till summit you actually have to get that done by next thursday how much work would you do between now and next Thursday to get yourself to that goal? So if your goal for the end of the year was elite, what if I said, actually, okay, I'm really sorry, but you actually only have till next Thursday to get to elite. How much work would you do? Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so next Thursday is the quarter one cutoff. So legitimately though, you guys, like how much work are you going to do between now and next Thursday? Okay, so that's speaking to one type of learner or one type of person. Okay, so what if I told you now that you could make $1 million if you hit your goal? So whether your goal is five star, whether your goal is one star, two star, 15 star, what if I told you that you could make $1 million if you hit that goal by next week? How much work would you do in this week ahead? Like, would you be staying up late? Would you be getting up extra early? Would you be pushing in the cracks of the day? All the work, yes. That's one person. Nobody else wants a million dollars. No sleep. All right, so here's my favorite one. <laughs> okay, so, and some people, a last call that I did where I mentioned this, somebody was like, I don't know who Chris Hemsworth is. Um, what if I told you that you could have lunch with Chris Hemsworth or insert your celebrity crush here if you hit your goal by next week? How much work would you do in this next week ahead? And if you don't know who Thor is, you can pick a different celebrity, like whoever your person is. But how much work would you do if you're like, oh my gosh, I could have lunch with that person? Yeah, using any extra time in the classroom, training, practices to work, yes. Team no sleep, yes. Yeah, so you guys, that's kind of my point of this, is that you are capable of doing all of those things right now, but it's all within your mindset. Like, do I think that I need to work that hard this week or do I feel like I have plenty of time? Why not get all of those things accomplished? You know you could do that in a week. You know that you could push yourself to hit your goals in a week. So why aren't we doing those things? Because we're not seeing that instant gratification. We're setting our goals even bigger and we're using even more time to get ourselves there. So work hard, work like you know those things are at the finish line because not the Chris Hemsworth, but all the rest of those things are at your finish line. Like all the rest of those things are possible. So my one final takeaway is that Chris Hemsworth or insert your celebrity here is waiting for you just on the other side of that work that you know you have to do. Your six figures is waiting for you on the other side of that work. Your ability to stay home with your kids, your ability to be debt free, 
whatever your vision is, that's waiting for you on the other side of that work. So you have to decide in this week ahead, am I going to put in the work? Am I going to get up early? Is it worth it for me to get up early? Or is 30 more minutes of sleep going to be worth it? So are you going to have lunch with him or not? That's my final thing. So um, if you guys have questions or anything, I'm happy to answer questions or whatever. Hopefully that was helpful. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I like how you, you basically did differentiated instruction there at the end, teach, yeah. te teacher. <laughs> that was great though. Um, does anyone have any questions for Dylan? And some other teachers on this call too, so they'll appreciate that. <laughs> anyone? Nothing? Nothing at all? Hmm. All right, I'll ask a few then. Um, <laughs> so we've got a lot of coaches that are on this team that have been working on certain goals for a long time. Um, not to say that there's any specific amount of time that any goal should take because everyone's journey is different, but for those coaches who have been maybe working on a certain goal for a while and they're kind of getting discouraged because they haven't achieved that goal yet, um, what, what is like your biggest tip for them and where should they focus on? Like, what's that one thing you think that'll really make a difference, if anything? Like, I don't know if it's just one thing, but what would you tell that, that coach that's kind of like, all right, I've been working on this goal forever and I still haven't, feel like I haven't gotten there yet? Um, I would say nothing changes if nothing changes. So if you've been working on that goal for a while and you're not there yet, then take a step back and assess where you're at and what you've been doing and figure out one thing you can change. Don't like revamp every single possible thing you've been doing, but figure out one thing. Like if you have been running coaching sneak peeks with your upline all this time, then maybe take a step back and do something different. Maybe go live, post on your stories and post a question box and say, Okay, I'm going live tomorrow night. You ask questions about what I've been doing. If no one asks questions, ask all the rest of these ladies on this team, like, hey, will you go to my question box and just ask something really quick or come up with your own questions. No one knows what other people ask and go live and share about those things. So pick something that you haven't been doing and change it up. If it's, okay, I know that I have been slacking in my invites. Okay, so double up your invites, triple up your invites, change something up. If the wording that you've been doing isn't working, change it. If the way you've been presenting it in your stories isn't working, change it. But just find something and pick one thing, one area where you feel like is maybe your weakness or one area that's a controllable for you and just make a change in that area. Because I feel like that's what a huge thing that worked for me or even assessing, am I really doing all the things? Like that was a huge one for me was like, okay, so I say I want this, but am I really acting like I want it? Am I really acting like the elite coach that I want to be? Or am I just like kind of going through the motions and like doing my bare minimums? So hopefully that's helpful. <laughs> no, that's great. I think that'll be super helpful for a lot of people and some people who are watching the recording too, because, you know, team calls, not everyone can make them live, but <laughs> anyone have any other questions? Or maybe did that make you think of a question you had? I know sometimes one question sparks another one. <laughs> I'm an open book, so literally anything you guys need, just ask away. Okay, I have a question. Yay! Um, what is, I guess, your biggest tip? I know, like, you're fairly new in the business, I guess. Um, I'm coming up on my three-year mark in, end, at the end of June. Um, but what is your, like, biggest tip for, like, helping your personally sponsored coaches rank advanced to diamond. Um, I have no issue like building emeralds and I, I have no problem with that at all, but um, I need some help. I think with just helping coaches become to the point where they can just hit diamond, um, I guess in a timely manner, I have so many girls that are close and I think Carolyn's question and most of them are on this call. Um, I think Carolyn's question was like partially directed to towards me because I've been like, stuck at diamond for like two and a half years. Um, and I feel like I'm doing the right thing. So I guess just any advice you have on helping your coaches move their businesses forward so that they don't feel stuck either, because I feel like 
they may feel the way I feel, but before hitting diamond. Yeah. So, um, I run diamond internships. So I create like a form and I have all the girls on my team apply. Um, I'll say before this, that I do think the energy that you put behind it. Um, I don't know if you, I say, listen to, if you've read energy bus, that's like one of my all time favorite books, but, um, I'm a big believer in the energy behind the things you do. I'm actually listening to um, Super Attractor by Gabby Bernstein right now, and that's really good too, but it's kind of the same premise. Like the energy that you're putting out there is what you're going to attract. So if you believe like right now, like what is your goal by Summit? My goal is I would like to be four to five star by Summit. Try again. So I should be five star by Summit. <laughs> what I will be I, I will be five star by seven okay. so you need to go do you have a team page like for your team yeah and I actually like Carolyn had told me a couple of weeks ago we started a diamond internship and two of them maybe three of them are on this call right now and we're on week four so like it's going really great and I think that we're loving the energy um but I'm excited to see like the next few weeks so we are trying that and I do have a team page too so I think maybe I just need to bring more positive energy into the team page and like bring the whole team involved in the goal so that they feel a part of it maybe. Yeah. So I would go in there. Like what I did last year at the very beginning of the year was I was like, Hey, you guys, we were premier last year. I don't know how we did it, but we're going to be elite this year. So if you want to do this with me and you want to run with me, let's go. And I basically just told them I was going to run a diamond internship. I was accepting six people only. And that included my whole downline. And one of my coaches actually went elite this year too, which was really cool. Um, Cause she was just kind of like pushing alongside me and like we were doing all the things together, but we basically ran that diamond internship together and it was six girls for the first one. We picked eight girls for the next one. And everybody that was in those internships went diamond. Um, but I think it's all that energy. And so what I had my girls do each week was, we got on Sunday night calls. So every single Sunday we had just a quick 30 minute call, whether it was a training, a work sesh, whether it was just kind of looking at where we were at for the week and assessing like, Hey, so did I do all the things this week that I needed to do? Did I move forward? Are my success club points? Is my onboarding is X, Y, Z. Like, is this more than it was last week? And if not, what do I need to do better? So I think just kind of having that assessment and then, um, I had all my girls use, I don't know if you guys have heard of the app Marco Polo. It's basically just like Instagram stories that you're like talking all the time. Um, so I have all my girls that are with me do use the Marco Polo app and all day long, they just check in and tell me like in any internship. So like right now, my internship that's going on, I have eight girls in it and all day long, they just check in as they get things done. So like, Hey, okay. So I just got my workout done and I sent 10 invites and I'm going to plug back in and do 20 more invites later and then they get off and it just kind of helps hold them accountable. But I think the energy behind what you do is really what's going to move them forward more than anything else. Um, which sound, I, which isn't really a good answer, but I do think like if you believe that everybody's going to do it, then everybody's going to do it. If you're like, well, we're going to try, we'll see if everybody maybe gets this goal accomplished, then there's like a 50, 50 chance. So I would just say really rallying the troops and just being like, okay, guys, for real, we're going to do it. We're going to make this happen. We will be five star by summit. So who's going to be those stars that are with me? Like who's going to be recognized as a diamond at summit. So just kind of breathing that belief into everybody. That's the biggest thing. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that's helpful. Sorry, my computer is dying. <laughs> Sorry, I muted you because it was super like weird. <laughs> I tried to remove your computer one and keep the phone one to see if that would help, but okay. But no, though that was a great, um, great tips and great advice. I know she's been doing that that mentorship. I know we had a call uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I had kind of directed her towards maybe trying that out because that's not something that she's ever done before, and I I've seen it like changing a lot of things for her and I think just continuing to do that and just having patience and it'll eventually all come together for you just like 
keep doing it because it's clearly it's working. I mean, your girls are on this call and I, they're on the leaderboard and they're doing things. So yeah, that's awesome. Just keep breathing that belief. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, I'm back. I don't know what the heck just happened, but <laughs> I'm back and it's not annoying okay. anymore. <laughs> Anyone else? No. All right. All right. Well, thank you for, again for spending time with us tonight. We really appreciate it. And I will see you on Thursday, right? Thursday? It is. Yes. It's a little later, right? 830? Yeah. Okay, cool. So thank you again. We appreciate you. And if anyone has any other questions and you want to just send them to me and I'll just maybe send them over to you if that's cool, yeah. um, then, then I can do that. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. All Thanks right. Guys. Thank you. Good night.